Hi, welcome to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. In this video, we are going to create a dialogue system that can show a message or it can trigger a conversation to another NPC here. But in this example, I'm going to show you that if we click in this radio game object, it will show a message. So this is what we are going to create here. Basically, I can move around with this character and this is covered on the previous video. And if we click on this radio game object, you see that we have this nice message and we can click on this message to close it or we can click anywhere else to close the message. So let's just get into the tutorial. Now I have opened the point and click scene here. I've added a radio object that I've downloaded from Sketchfab and I'll put the link in the description. So now in order to create the dialogue system here where we can show a message, we need to first create a canvas. So I'm going to create a new canvas here. And then I'm going to also create a new empty game object. And I'm going to set the canvas here under the canvas scaler component to scale with screen size and set the resolution to 1920 by 1080. And if we go to the scene view here, I'm going to go to the 2D view and select the canvas and then scale to the canvas view here. I'm going to set the game object height to around 300 and I'm going to set the position, the anchor preset to this selection here by holding the alt button. I'm going to press this one so it snaps to this position here. And I'm going to add a margin on the left side and on the right side. And I'm going to set the Y position to 175. Okay, so this is going to be our dialog game object. So I'm going to change this to dialog. And I'm going to create another image as the child of the dialog here. And I'm going to fit the size using these options here by holding the Alt button. And for the image, I'm going to set its color to black and I'm going to add a transparency. So I'm going to set the alpha to 70 and I'm going to rename this to panel. And the next thing that I want to do, I want to create a text object as the child of this panel here. And I'm going to set the color to white. So it's contrast with the background here. And I'm going to set the font size to around 35. And I'm going to fit the text to this parent game object here by pressing this preset. And it seems the color doesn't get changed. So I'm going to change this one more time. And I'm going to add a margin on all of the left top and the right bottom settings here. So I'm going to set this to 35. And now we have a nice text here. And if we go to the game view, you see that we have a nice dialog window here. And now let's create the FSM for the dialog system here. So I'm going to select the dialog game object and under the playmaker, let's create a new FSM. And let's call this FSM dialog manager. And first we want to create a new string variable to hold the message, but this variable, we want to create this as a global variable. So I'm going to create a new variable here by going to the playmaker menu and then under the editor windows, I'm going to open the global variables and I'm going to change the type to string and I'm going to call this message. Now we have a global variable. I'm going to close this window here and under the first state, I'm going to rename the state to wait for message. And here I'm going to use the string change action. So this action will check if a certain string has changed or not. So I'm going to pick the global string message. And for the change event, I'm going to create a new event and I'm going to call this show message. And I'm going to add that transition show message. And I'm going to create a new state by holding the control button on the keyboard and then drag into a new state here. So it will automatically create a new state. And now here we want to activate the game object. So I'm going to activate the game object here and I'm going to select specify game object and I'm going to enable the child object panel here. And I'm going to disable the recursive option. And we want to also using the set text action here, UI text set text. And I'm going to change this to specify game object and let's direct the child text game object here. And for the message, we want to 
show the message that we pass on the global variable here. And now we have this here. I'm going to add a get mouse button down. And upon clicking mouse button, we want to close the panel here. So I'm going to put this action down below here and I'm going to create a new event. And let's just call this close panel. And let's add this close panel transition here. And we want to create a new state. So I'm going to hold control and then release it here. And here I'm going to reset the text and add a finish transition to it. And here basically we want to set a string value using the set string value action. And we want to set the message back to an empty string here and go back to the first one here. And we want to copy the activate panel action from this state here, but this time we want to paste it here and we want to disable this. So basically upon starting the game, the panel will get hidden using the activate game object action. And when the string is changed, then we are going to show the message here. Then we are going to show the message on the UI text here. We are after that, we are going to activate the panel and then we are going to wait for the left mouse button down event here. And if it happens, then we are triggering the close panel and it will clear the message and it will go back to the state here and then it will hide the dialogues. So now we have this dialog system here. In order to test this, we need to create a new FSM on some object. But first I'm going to modify the cop FSM here and basically I'm going to go to our scene here and basically we want to change the way the point and click behavior here. So first I'm going to add a tag ground to the ground here and we want to move only on the ground game object here. So if we select the cup game object here, we are going to change this using the mouse pick event. I'm going to store the game object into a new variable and I'm going to call this walkable. And we are not going to use this boolean anymore, so I'm going to set this to none. And then I'm going to delete the bool test here, but I'm going to use the compare tag action here. So I'm going to use the game object compare tag. And I'm going to check the game object that we've picked has the tag of ground. Then we want to go to move the player. Otherwise, we want to go back to the first state. And I'm going to also add the UI is pointer over UI object. So basically this will check if our mouse is over the UI element. And if it's over, then we want to go back to finish here. So it will cancel this state and go back to the first state. And now we want to set the position of our particle or the move indicator to the next state here. So I'm going to select both of the set position and this call method here. And I'm going to cut this and then paste this on the last state here and put this above. So basically, if I go ahead and test this out, you see that now I can walk around. But if I click on the box here, the player will stay, it won't move to this area here, but we can pick another area that is the ground. And now with this setup here, I'm going to add a new action on the first state, which is going to be the smooth look at action. So basically we want to transition the player to look to an object that we've clicked. So here I'm going to pick the position using the target destination here. And for the up vector, I'm going to set this to the Y value to one. So it will rotate on the Y axis. And yeah, this is will be all. So I'm going to put this above here. And now if we test this, you see that if I click, if I go to this position here and then I click this box here, it will facing to this box. And now let's create something to trigger the message. So I'm prepared this radio game object here and I've add a box collider so we can click on it. So I'm going to create a new FSM 
and here for the FSM let's just call this radio and I'm going to use the the mouse pick event and I'm going to unpack this so we don't have this message and we want to trigger the mouse down event here so I'm going to create a new event under the mouse down here and I'm going to call this clicked and I'm going to add a click transition and then by holding control I'm going to create a new state here and now here we want to change or we want to trigger the dialog message by using the set string value and we can just pick the message so whenever we change the global variable message this will trigger the dialog message to appear in our game view and we can just say that the radio looks broken okay and we can add a finish event here and go back to the first state but we need to add a next frame event otherwise we will have a infinite loop here so I'm going to add a next frame event and we want to send the finish on the next frame so let's just pick the finish this way this will prevent infinite loop because we might click and then it will show the string value on the same frame and it will go back to this first state on the same frame and trigger this event again okay so now let's save the scene and now let's give it a try and we can move around and we can pick here and it will look at this box here but if we move to another position we can click on this radio here and it will show this message here as you can see we have a very nice dialogue system and if I just go somewhere else it will automatically close the dialogue system because we are basically closing the dialogue upon mouse button down and if we press the radio again it will show the message again but if we click on this area here the player will stay on this position it will not move to this position because the UI elements it's blocking the mouse click here so if you can see here under the cup game object on the second state we have this event here so this is preventing from the cup to move around if we click on top of the UI element so yeah that will be all for this tutorial and this is how we create a dialog system and using a global variable we can just trigger the string changes on this game object here and whenever the string gets changed the dialog will show the message here using the string change and that's why we need to clear the message whenever we close the panel here so it will empty the string again and if we trigger a new message then it will show again if we don't clear the text here then we will have the last string on our message variable and whenever we click this radio again it won't show the new message so with this global variable we can easily trigger the dialog system so i hope you like this video and if you like it hit that like button and subscribe this channel for more unity game development with c -Sharp, playmaker and also bold and thanks a lot for watching See you on the next video.